and thank you so much for asking me shahzad so the weather is really you know great and i would call it a general a gentle manifestation of climate change right yep. uh, and we don't need acs right and ladies and gentlemen we were having in the off the record conversation and you know he told me that he has still acs on why is that shahzad <laughs> yeah so uh, okay i'll be honest over here and uh, mm -hmm. i think first of all uh, because i have lost the uh, remote control for my okay. air conditioner in my room so right. my daughter now actually has learned to climb onto my side table and then <laughs> turn it out with her bare hands as well so okay. i think most of the time she's very interested in turning on my air conditioner right, but right. in between somewhere when i start to feel that hey you know what it's cold enough you know i would get up and then you know obviously shut it down as well so you know because right. i do not certainly believe in wasting a lot of resource and when we talk right. about electricity i think we have been through that hard <laughs> right. tough patch you know right, the previous right. month as well so whatever we can preserve and uh, whatever we are supposed to consume if we keep that balance i think it's going to be perfect but other than that you know so it is hot though you know when we talk about I mean, 30 it's, 31 it's, it's 32 it's not that much or, and i think during the day at least during the day it is but i think at night you know the temperatures are substantially uh, come uh, like yes, yes, yes. 10 degrees down <laughs> yeah. sub stuff like yes. that and uh, and you know i really like islamabad for that matter because i think islamabad used to have a very moderate temperature <laughs> which is not nowadays but it used to be like that exactly. and whenever there was a extreme heat you know after 2 3 days there will be a rain right True. and the temperature would get again moderate this is the beauty of islamabad i think the the beauty of islamabad is that you know you go to different places it's raining over there and you go to another sector you right. know two streets Uh, right. you know next to that sector you know right. it's not raining right. and you start to question yourself whether aren't we such good um, uh, muslims or <laughs> something of that sort right, as well kuch nek ki nekiyan karne ki zarurat hai kya hame ki hamari tarah bhi barish aaye you know that's how right. people put it as well right. but the best part over here is right. that imagine that the person who actually pays all the bills or pays all the right. bills at my place actually sleeps without an ac <laughs> right, and right. a fan too as well right. oh. so while i was you know coming out of my father's room today because right. i borrowed the uh, this waistcoat from him it, it, it was nice of him to give it to me as well <laughs> but you know imagine what he said so he's like bhai jaate hue yaar zara pankha do and so <laughs> i was like uh, abu why don't you turn on the air conditioner and he goes like yaar sardi lagti so imagine one right. extreme is that you're not even turning on the fan and the air conditioner and the other extreme just upstairs next to your room is <laughs> where the air conditioner and the you fan know, both are you know are when you are young when you are kid there is very unexplainable fascination with ac i can't explain that because because i when i was young you know we had those russian acs you remember yeah that? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, the, i do remember that right. as well and you know imagine that you know the first air conditioner right. came to our place when right. uh my nephew was born okay. and, and you know my sister kept on telling my father and my mother that you know he cannot actually sleep stay without <laughs> or sleep without the ac that was the time when the nana bu got the ac as well right. so i think it's great everybody right. does that and everybody right. goes through that journey right. of self development self actualization and it's right. good and it's beautiful as well but very quickly let's talk about um, you know what are we discussing today in fact right. i think today the conversation is going to be really insightful because right. we might not have discussed the month of zul hajj in such a manner as well of course so which is why because uh, obviously ladies and gentlemen you know in a few days we will get started with the month of zul hajj and people do right, uh, right. fast for the first 9 days right. as well and it's because of the fact that it happens to be the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and then obviously on the 10th day the sunnah ibrahimi obviously the sacrifice uh, the sacrifice will take place which is in the first place for allah but allah does not get the meat of whatsoever mm -hmm. so it stays with us so what is the concept why right. do we do that what is the importance of this month so imagine i'm going to put right. in front of you the nine sunnahs of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and then we have a very amazing guest over here in the studios who will let us know what are we supposed to do and what is the importance of this month right. so imagine the first one is zikr please make sure that you indulge yourself in zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala right. in the first 10 days but not only the first 10 days just because we're saying it i'm sharing it because these Uh, characteristics are from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so then fast for 9 days 
the first nine days and then recite Quran. Remember right. your loved ones. That's very important as well. You know, when right. we're closer to Eid, we always do that too as well. Pray the Hajjad. Well, you're certainly supposed to pray the Hajjad every single night. If you can, if you do not, I think you can start from here onwards as well. Give sadqa, then repent, pray Eid Salah and give a prophetic qurbani. You know, these are the nine sunnahs, ladies and gentlemen. So right. without any further ado, the importance of Zil Hajj and that too with somebody who I really take a lot of inspiration from the, the way he is, the way his personality is, the way he keeps his calm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are lucky that we have been joined by Mufti Sheikh Tukir Sahib as well. Hello sir, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Very good, how are you? Absolutely perfect sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you over here once again and that too on a Friday. And we look forward to a very insightful program and the audiences out there in 46 different countries. So, uh, the importance of the month of Zulhaj. Yeah, thank you very much, both of you, mashallah. I always all, also get very inspired by you as well whenever I come and mashallah, exactly. very energetic and uh, always give a, uh, you know, a good start to the day, mashallah. And uh, always like when you start with all of these greetings. <laughs> uh, Zul Hijjah, a very important topic that we are talking about Zul Hijjah because it's starting in a few days time, inshallah. <clears throat> um, if you look into um, the way that everything is designed, um, we have a roof, we have a spirit, spirit mm. within. You know, it's very unfortunate that we only think about our bodies and we do not, do not think about that there's something within which is called our ruh, and that's the real insan, that's a real human being. True. Right in the womb of our mothers, when an embryo is being developed, then as per the prophetic tradition, after four months, Allah Ta'ala puts the ruh in the bodies. <coughs> and then the babies come out and we all uh, live for as much as Allah Ta'ala has destined for us and then a time comes that when the ruh goes out and that's what we call death uh, but that's the physical death but it's not the spiritual death. This, this ruh needs nourishment just like our bodies need nourishment. We eat breakfast, we eat lunches, we eat dinners. Mm -hmm. Likewise the ruh needs nourishment and one of the nourishment is on a daily basis and that is five daily prayers. People don't understand what prayers are Prayer, daily prayers are the nourishment for this soul, the nourishment for this ruh. Then there are some boosters that this ruh needs. One of the boosters is Ramadan. So we just we are coming out of Ramadan a couple of months ago. That was a booster. That was a need uh, for the ruh. That one month you fast, you, you you recite Quran, you pray Taraweeh, and all of that. Then you know it's like our spiritual battery getting charged, and then as the time goes on, start get, getting discharged. And then there is another booster, then there, there is another chart that comes just a couple of months later, which is Zul Hijjah. Zul Hijjah, we don't, under, it's, it's a very powerful spiritual booster, act, actually, sure. right? And some have said that these 10 days of Zul Hijjah are very much like the last 10 days of Ramadan, if not more, actually. There is a, there is a, a saying that there are maybe possibly more than that, which we don't give much importance to. And Allah Ta'ala has uh, taken an oath in the Quran by these 10 days in Surah Al-Fajr, in the last Jews, 30th Jews, that wal fajri wa in ashrin, that by the Fajr, by the time of Fajr, and by the 10 nights. So Allah Ta'ala is taking an oath by the 10 nights, and it's almost a consensus that these 10 nights are the 10 days and nights of Zul Hijjah. So very, very important days. It's a spiritual booster. And I also want to talk about one the biggest booster which unfortunately we as Muslims often uh, neglect and forget and that is one boost in a lifetime and that also happens to be in Zul Hijjah which is Hajj right so Hajj happens on the 9th of Zul Hijjah basically the Arafat the day of Arafat uh, Allah Ta'ala says that all of you come to my house do pay a visit to my house uh, for Hajj once in your lifetime if you can afford to sure. do so. Right? Man istata alayhi sabila, whoever has the istatat, has the capability, ability to come and visit. So we, we make sure that all of us who have the ability, who have the financial um, uh, abilities Support, to yeah. go to for Hajj, we must make a plan to go because that is a need for our spirituality. I mean. Uh, there is nothing like it. So Allah Ta'ala wants that we take that before that we go back to, to Allah. So this is what right. Zul Hijjah is about. Right. Thank you so much for very aptly putting that. Uh, now, you know, I would say that, you know, reading Quran is 
a recommendation. It's not a mandatory thing, Islam, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And you know, very aptly, like Shahzad mentioned the hadith and the importance of doing that. Um, and, and especially when we talk about today's era, which is so fast, you know, we have so many distractions around here. True. How do we reconcile uh, the hukm shari with uh, this, you know, the recommendation of reading Quran? Mashallah, um, you brought up a very good topic. Thank you. First thing first, you know, Quran is a book of guidance and it's right. not just a book to take blessings from, right. right? Unfortunately, again, once again, that we have taken it as if it's just a book of taking blessings, True. barakat, right. right? So it's very strange tradition that I've seen in some houses in Pakistan mm -hmm. that, you know, when a somebody's getting married, you know, a bride going out, you put a Quran on top of her head and she walks under the shade of Quran and you know there's, there's nothing like that in, 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 in our deen, in our Islam. Mm -hmm. These are something that people have just added on and the whole concept is oh you know take barakat from it. It's a book of guidance, right? right? We are living this life from our birth to our passing on, moving on. Right. I don't call it like dying because as I said it's a physical death but not a spiritual death. We just move on. So how do we live this life? There's guidance in this book. So it will be very unfortunate to just say, oh, you know, it's just not a fur, it's not wajib, it's not mandatory. So just like if you want to read it, read it. If you don't want right. to read it, don't want to read it. Where do we get guidance from then? Yeah. It is the book where we do guidance from, from our birth to our adulthood to our old age. And, and in fact, I mean, this is a whole new topic. You're talking about Dhul Hijjah, but because you have highlighted that, you know, there is nothing in our life for which there is no guidance in Quran. There, for every single situation in our life, you will get something out of Quran. Prophet, right. peace be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he went through a lot of situation in his life. Right. And when he was in a certain situation, Allah Ta'ala revealed some verses in the Quran. And there is like a pretext to that. There is a, there is a shan in nuzul as we say it. There's a reason for revelation for that. And when you look at that incident and look at the ayat of the Quran, and you will find that there is something in your life that's very similar to that. So the reason Allah Ta'ala has, 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 has sort of forced his, his beloved, his prophet to go through that situation and then revealing those ayat is that you will also go through certain situations. Right. Now what to do? What is, what, what is the so guidance that you take out? So, so we should not just take it as a book of barakat, as a book of blessings, but rather as a guidance. That's where it starts from. That is Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. So, so when you say it's not a, just a book of barakat, it's more than that. Uh, and I asked this question yesterday also that, for example, I consider myself as a commoner, right? I'm a common a person, c common people, right? And I want to explore the relationship between the Quran and the commoners, right? Uh, I have been raised up in a non-Arabic speaking society, right? And I've always believed that, you know, Quran is something, um, you know, b because uh, I know it's a flawed belief, but uh, this is what has been instilled into mind that, you know, a non-expert cannot interact with that. Someone who do, do not have an understanding of Arabic, you know, cannot actually go and delve into it, you know, without understanding the actual deeper meanings that are within the Quran, right? Um, so how do you explain this? I know this is a very flawed so How do you get to the guidance point of it? Right, right, right. right. I think, you know, there is everything. Uh, there is There are exagger exaggerations to everything. There is one right. group of people who say, you know, don't even touch it, right? right. Oh, no, it's not for it's you. You're not an Arabic speaker. Okay. And there is another group who say, you know, just like read it and even that's you it. And you can, finger on yeah, you just, just get all the fatwas out of it without right. even uh, understanding it. That's so there true. are two extremes that are out there. Deen is, our religion is, is a moderate religion. It's a religion of the middle way. Um, it's right. What you're saying is right. And not everybody can uh, because we're not experts. So we cannot just take. But that's why commentaries are written. True. There are right. commentaries written by those who have mastered Arabic language, who mastered the sciences of Quran. It's not only Arabic language, but there are many, many sciences. One of them I did mention, Shanu Nuzul, the reasons of revelation. So there are many things through which you understand Quran, but commentaries have been written. So read the commentaries, and mashallah, I mean, you guys are intelligent enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if there's a person who, Allah Ta'ala has also given intelligence, just like r money has been distributed, there are some people who don't have enough, some people have a lot. Likewise, intellects have also been distributed. True. There are some who don't have much intellect, but there are people so like yourselves, right. mashallah, are intellectual. You're right. I I don't disagree with that. That we are not experts, but then there are commentaries written. Go and read commentaries. Mashallah, there are volumes <laughs> written. I mean, we must take time out to read Quran, 
understand Quran, read commentaries. And in those commentaries, there, there, it is also mentioned that how to take guidance out of it. Exactly. And thank you very much for saying that because, you know, other than intellect, I think you've been blessed with a lot of kindness too as well, where you keep right. on uh, complimenting us. So thank you very much for that too as well, sir. Right. But now I want to come down to the point where, you know, how at times this is something which, which happens to me. Obviously, since we were talking about Zulhaj as well, obviously Zikr is one of them as well. And when we mm -hmm. talk about Zikr, obviously that reciting Quran comes in between too. Now imagine that you know half of the time when I'm listening to the translations, I just get scared most of the time, mm -hmm. and and I'm like, yeah, you know, so many people have gone through so many problems and troubles, and was safa hasti se mita dene wala jo sara system raha hai, I say, yeah, we do not even stand a chance, you know, the, for the kind of people we are, for the kind of actions we might have, mm -hmm. we obviously do repent, but then the first reaction is that I get scared. I'm like, hey, you know what, you know, so how do you think that you will stand a chance after listening to the Quran uh, translation? So how do you think that we actually have a relationship with our holy book in a way that at least we don't get scared, but rather get better, pe be better people every other day? Right. If there is a, <clears throat> a danger, right? I mean, as it's a very famous saying that if there is a, there's a pigeon and the cat is about to attack the pigeon, right? Closes the eye. Yeah. Closes the eye. It does not take away the danger. True. You yeah. have to do something about it, right? So the danger it is real. Then yeah. you have to fly. Danger is real, but at the very same time, uh, I'm sure you must have read just a part of Quran. What about the ayahs of mercy, the verses yeah, of yeah, mercy, yeah. right? I've understood them so too. Again, it's all about the middle way. Right, so it's between right. hope and fear. There is a saying in, in Arabic that al imanu bain al khawfi wa raja, that belief is between hope and fear. Right. There has to be fear. This is how we are designed. I mean, um, I don't know how. Well, we can talk about the motorways here. I mean, we know that there is a motorway police standing at every corner. So you don't follow rules anywhere, but you follow rules, speed limits on the motorway. Right? As soon as you see the cops, you're like, okay, hey, you uh, know what? Slow uh, down. So that what stops you? Fear, right? Yeah, yeah. Fear is a necessary element. You cannot walk the path or the, the right path, the straight path, the moderate path. Until that, there is some sort of fear within. Sure. This is how we are designed. But then when we start getting hopeless, right? Oh, there are ayahs of mercy. There are verses of mercy. Allah Ta'ala forgives everything. So that's what keeps us as a balanced personality. So yes, we do get afraid at times. And we have to. I mean, the, we, we, the Quran talks of Fir'aun, talk, uh, Quran talks of Namrud. And, and Ad and all of these nations, Lut and Islam, Islam's people, uh, uh, everything. And then, uh, yes, they were punished for that. But you know why were they punished? Because they were arrogant people. Exactly. This mentality, by the way, again, you'll say that I'm praising you, but this I must uh, acknowledge what is right. I mean, this personality, oh, you know, I'm scared. I mean, I don't want to do anything wrong. True. You know, this is this actually takes us out of that state of arrogance. They were punished because they were arrogant people who never cared who never cared about what Allah Ta'ala wanted them to do. True. Well, thank you very much for saying that as well, because in addition to that, I, will, I would love to add over here that fear, um, I believe, is good, because fear tells you when to stop. You know, this, right. is, this is one thing, you know, so no fear and all of those, I don't believe in it at all. You know, while even you're driving rashfully as well, you know, right. please make sure that, you know, you have some sense of fear mm -hmm. at least. At least it will tell you, your instincts will tell you that you really need to stop. But now, sir, I'm going to come down to where I, I read somewhere, I, I cannot quote it, but it said that, you know, if you can afford to go for your pilgrimage, first of all, make sure that your brother's not hungry, your sister's not hungry. Make sure that, you know, that the money you're going to spend for your pilgrimage, make sure that you sort your uh, brothers and sisters, your friends, your family members out first, and then if you get a chance, go for pilgrimage. What would you say on that? I will add one more thing on top of sure. that, which has also become a very common narrative these days, is that also don't sacrifice if your people are, you know, you see, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. go, just give charity and you don't have to sacrifice. Look, why do we give charity? This is a question, a bigger picture. Why do we give charity? One is that, oh, it's like a human instinct, oh, give charity, somebody is, is suffering, which is fine, but then at the end of the day, we need to look at that, that, uh, that we are from Allah, going back to Allah Ta'ala, and whatever we do in the middle is for the sake of Allah. In salati wa nusuki wa mahiyai wa mamati lillahi rabbil al my, my, uh, my prayers, my sacrifice, my life and my death are for Allah, right? So we live for Allah Ta'ala. Allah is the one who ordered us that give charity, 
And Allah is the one who ordered us that if you do afford, if you can afford, then come to my house, with, pay a visit to something. It's not that Allah Ta'ala is living there, but this is, a, this is a place, a construction which Allah Ta'ala has said, this is my house. So as a notion for, to, to express your love for me, come and pay a visit to my house once in your lifetime if, if you have the capability. True. So it's Allah's orders, True. right? So when it's Allah Ta'ala's orders, then we just, just take the orders. True. So if we do have the capability, finances, uh, we can, we, if, if say for example, we have our parents who are dependent on us, we must leave enough behind for them that they are well taken care of, if, uh, right. if, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we do pay a visit uh, if, if we can. And also likewise, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the on 10th of Zul Hijjah, there is no better uh, ibadat. deed, ibadat, on that day other than to, in, to, to, wow. to sacrifice and to yeah. slaughter. So on that day, you know, giving a charity, it becomes a lower priority versus and plus there is a lot of wisdom behind that all of these people who are raising their animals in the in the villages they, I mean it's it's uh, it's not that yeah. you're not benefiting anybody True. and plus the meat that you sec the slaughter you of course you right. you distribute that True. to poor people who don't get a chance to 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 eat meat for the rest of the year maybe right so but anyway we there is wisdom to everything but we have to look at what Allah Taala has ordered us and we should exactly and in addition to that because we are talking about the Sunnat Ibrahimi over here as well and the sacrifice so imagine you know so there's a surah which says that you know that the meat's not going to come to me so what is it that we are actually offering to Allah Almighty over here when we sacrifice our submission that's what it is our submission. Allah Ta'ala is saying, don't show off, you're doing it for my sake, right? Because this is <laughs> another thing that, oh, you know, he has bought a hundred thousand uh, rupee. hundred uh, thousand uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's very expensive these days. So, uh, you know, yeah, for so, an ordinary person yeah. to afford it, you know, yeah. hundred thousand is somewhat okay. Yeah. But I think it has gone beyond five million, you know, ten so million. I, you know, people are so putting I, in as much but as... But why are they doing it? Just because, you know, I want to compete, I want to show off my but wealth. But then it people. can be for the love of Allah too. Yeah, well, well, that's your intention and yes. Allah knows the intention. True. That's exactly what Allah Ta'ala said, you know, the meat doesn't reach me, the blood doesn't reach me. It's a taqwa that reaches me. In other words, it's your sincerity, it's your intention that reaches me. So, I mean, we cannot judge people. I can't judge, you can't judge me, I cannot judge you. But it's Allah Ta'ala who knows the secrets of the hearts. So if people are doing it for the sake of Allah, good for them. Best. Right. Thank yes. you so much for saying that. And uh, sir, so um, this concept of separating politics from the religion, it has it was never in Islam, right? Uh, so a lot of, you know, governors, you know, who Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did deputed to the far off provinces like Egypt and you know uh, what not uh, Hijaz they used to come and gather on the Hajj pilgrimage and they used to report to Hazur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the uh, all the proceedings and the political matters and the governance matters and of course Hazur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take a lot of you know ambassadorial delegates and governors into the Masjid in Abbi to discuss the matters right so let's explore the relationship between self betterment between the Hajj and between the Quran your comments on that well, I mean, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the Islam know, didn't uh, spread that much. It was basically in later times, and especially in the time of Sayyidina Umar, right. Allah Ta'ala Anhu, when Islam spread to the whole world. And, and, and yes, it was an opportunity. I mean, that's fine. I mean, for, first thing first, you're absolutely right that you right. cannot separate religion from anything, right. let alone politics, right? right. Uh, uh, it's not only politics, it's every sphere of our life because I repeat, we are from Allah, going back to Allah and whatever we do in this life it has to be accordant, in accordance with what the guidance of Quran and Sunnah. So, uh, but yes, they, they took Hajj as, as an opportunity where people would come and, and they will discuss and things and as you said, rightly said that in, in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the delegations used to come and they used to meet him in the masjid. Right. So masjid was everything, it was just not a place of prayer but right. that's why yeah. congregation, jamaat for men is so important that you right. know the whole neighborhood gathers together yeah. five five times a day right. and when not only that we come and we pray but we also ask about you know how is everybody doing mm -hmm. and if somebody right. is missing for like a couple of days what what happened where is he right. right and we go and we see him and he's sick oh you know so there's a lot of so it's a benefits. neighborhood system basically. exactly right, right? so right. the Hajj has a lot of benefits of course congregation has a lot of benefits and in overall uh, religion generally speaking you know it is something that makes a beautiful society beautiful community and, and it helps you socialize more too as well 
<laughs> but thank you very much, Sheikh Sam, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation with you. And as Sheikh Sam mentioned, that it's like um, you know how we really know now the importance of you know the uh, boosters for COVID uh, <laughs> vaccines too as well. I think it's it's not that way, but like I think when you when you realize the importance of such a booster for your soul and you get it, you know, and that too twice or thrice um, in a year's time. I believe that everybody would certainly want to get themselves inoculated with such a booster too as well. Well, thank you very much, Sheikh Sab, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation. For everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, at this point of time, we're actually heading out towards a short pick when we guys will come back. We actually have some amazing stories to share, um, uh, some footage to share with you guys as well. And then not just that. Imagine that today we're talking about people who binge watch and eat a lot of food and then they say yeah. that, hey, you know what, we cannot control it. And they're right because they certainly cannot control it. Their impulse is harder on them rather than their control on themselves as well. We'll talk about it with a psychologist as well. We're heading out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and you know earlier on we were talking about the self betterment and you know yesterday we were talking about you know how we let nafs uh, get the best of us you know when we when it comes to the binge eating binge watching and uh, you know eating a lot and Munching. not yes yeah. and and you know sometimes not eating at all right um, so um, this is not normal thing this is an anomaly and we need to address that uh, so we do have a package on the mental health and please go and let's have a look yeah let's do this here we going 
Mental health plays a huge role in your general well-being. Being in a good mental state can keep you healthy and help prevent serious health conditions. A study found that positive psychological well-being can reduce the risks of heart attacks and strokes. On the other hand, poor mental health can lead to poor physical health or harmful behaviours. Depression has been linked to many chronic illnesses. These illnesses include diabetes, asthma, cancer, cardiovascular disease and arthritis. Schizophrenia has also been linked to a higher risk of heart and respiratory diseases. Sleep problems. People with mental health conditions are more likely to suffer from sleep disorders like insomnia or sleep apnea. While conditions like depression, anxiety or bipolar disorder may lead to sleep problems, sleep problems can also make existing mental health conditions worse. Access to health care. People with mental health conditions are less likely to have access to adequate health care. It may also be more difficult for people with mental health conditions to take care of their physical health. How to take care of your mental and physical health? Exercise is important for keeping physically fit, but it can also help improve your mood. A diet high in fruits and vegetables and low in processed sugars or fats can make you feel better physically and mentally. A good night's sleep is around 7 to 9 hours for adults. Meditation, deep breathing and focusing your thoughts can all help when you're feeling stressed. Focus on positive emotions and events rather than negative ones. Getting others to help with difficult situations can also reduce the burden that you feel. All right, well, you know, that was a wonderful comprehensive report on what you really need to do to make sure that you know, your moods are uplifted. But most of the time, you know, people who are laughing most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, they might even be hiding something as well. But very quickly, I think I need to ask Hajar over here. So, Hajar, do you have this habit of munching and binge watching and then scrolling and all of that? <laughs> I do binge watch a lot, I wouldn't deny that, but I don't have a, that much habit of munching a lot. Well, I think I have this habit of munching and so late night what I want to do is because Alhamdulillah I'm blessed with three daughters, so one comes okay. in with an ice cream, Mashallah. so I'll take a bite. Right. The other one comes in with right. a cookie, I'll take another bite. <laughs> right. The last one comes in with the milk of gla or the glass of milk, right. I'm going to take a few sips as well. So you know, whatever is, keeps on coming. Why are you drinking their milk? I mean, it's very important important nutrition it is it is but you know i just i just take it you know because uh, i believe that you know we really need to share with each other <laughs> as well so that's that's what it is and how can we control it is something we're talking right. about we're very lucky that we've been actually joined by a clinical psychologist and she happens to be miss aruj ilias bhatti saiba hello ma'am assalamu alaikum good morning how are you Sam, i'm fine how are you absolutely perfect thank you very much for joining us wonderful to have you over My here thing. so first of all let us identify whether is it a problem or do you think that it's not a problem it's just a habit uh, eating disorder is basically a clinical uh, group of di diseases. Okay. It basically is listed in the uh, DSM manual, which is basically the, you know, you can say a psychological Bible. Okay. And uh, it has actually different disorders like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and uh, binge eating. And right. two more disorders have been added in the latest uh, edition also. All right. So basically, these are clinically approved diseases. It is not just like somebody has bad eating habits and you say that that person is suffering from some eating disease. Yeah. It is not like that. So uh, when a person is suffering from anorexia nervosa, basically these people are very uh, thin in appearance because they are very much conscious with their body image. Yeah. Right. So basically they, uh, they are often uh, diagnosed with depression also mm -hmm. because they are very much conscious that how they look uh, and how they appear to the right. other people. So what they do is that uh, whatever they are eating, they try to purge that, you know, they try to uh, induce vomiting right. and they use laxative and things like that so that they do not get, uh, you know, weight gain. All right. And, and, you know, this is something which I've realized that humans are not happy in whatever condition they are. You know, the slimmer you are, you know, you want to gain more weight. Right. You know, if you are a little bulky right. or a chubby as well, you know, you want to reduce weight right. as well. So we're never happy. So Shazad, I'm sorry I'm yeah. cutting you, but we need to also uh, take into the equation the role of these multinational corporations, you know, who are instilling such kind of tactics into us. For example, the marketing strategies, yeah. you know. The, the whitening creams or you know the models that they are using there's so much slim, but, all you, but all you need to do is that you really need to be smart over here as well but very quickly you know so, so completing my point now imagine when we talk about eating disorders I, we know that we are human beings we are the right. smartest as well but imagine for all the other beings you would always see them gazing probably over the grass or whatever you know maybe horses cows whatever we see right. or goats they are all the time eating 
So I don't think that it's a problem because you know they are the creation of nature too as well. Most of the time, indulge in eating. If you indulge in eating and exercise and burn the extra calories, I think that can be fine too. No. No, basically we humans are uh, social beings. Yeah. We live in a culture, so animals do not have to. What do we socialize over? You know, in Pakistan we socialize over food. <laughs> कुछ that's बना true, ले <laughs> yeah. If you go out, you know this is a hoteling, you know. Coffee पी लो यार, कुछ खा लो यार, कुछ क्या करें यार, ice cream खा लो यार, चाय पी लो यार, चाय तो obviously you know in exactly. Pakistan we we so much in love with it. Right. So how do you think that we can correct that? If you say because you've just said it that it is a problem, how can we correct it? Uh, like you know, uh, these days there is too much pressure of social media on the people. Like Instagram, you know, people want this perfect body image all the time. They look at the models, and uh, often Thank we you. see the workout videos with very uh, lean people. Yeah. So people also get into some complex inferiority complex, and they also get depressed, and they want to get that ideal body image, which is yeah. not possible for any everybody. Right. True. So th that that is also the reason for uh, for the eating disorders to develop for many people because they want to be to look like celebrities. Yeah. They, they want to look that look like uh, these people. Exactly. So so now imagine yeah, when people have this peer pressure. You know, we I will right. call it or I would refer to it as peer pressure that yeah. hey, you know what he looks wonderful. You right. know, I certainly want to look the same as well. We talk about movie heroes. Right. We mm -hmm. we talk about Hollywood heroes as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know they've grown up so old, mm -hmm. and look how fit they are. So, do you think that that pressure will actually have an impact on your mental health too as well? Okay, yar, okay. Main nahi aisa ho sakta yeah, definitely it impacts a lot, and that's why uh, people try to compete with others, and they develop uh, negative thinking also. This is also a problem because when you go to uh, such a person who is going through uh, eating disorder, then that person is has a very poor self-image, and they are uh, thinking very negative of themselves. True. So they are often into drugs also because uh, to deal with their depression, they go into sleep deprivation and other problems also come with that. Right. right. And, and also, you know, talking about solutions, how do we make sure that, you know, people do not fall into this chaos, right? Especially when it comes, like Shahzad mentioned, you know, people want to imitate the Hollywood, right? Mm. Um, and, and they are getting inspiration from something, you know, which is so fictional and something which is so ideal. You don't even know them, right, personally. Yeah. You just see them. Imagine how good Tom Cruise was looking in Top Gun, you know, the <laughs> right. recent one as well. Imagine right. he's right. 60 years old. Right. And, right. you know, when you look at your parents, you're like, hey, you know what, even you're 60 years old. What happened to you, <laughs> right. unfortunately? But yeah. I think my father is very young in that. <laughs> alhamdulillah, time. alhamdulillah. We so. met, even my father is, but most of the time when we, right. even though now, you you know, when, when I look at my friends, they at least look 50 years old. And right. I'm like, hey, you know what, what are you guys doing with yourself? So, so how to correct all this anomaly, you know, which is going into our mind, especially because of the social so media. So how Yes. Cognitive behavioral therapy is very good for that. <laughs> so one need to go to the clinical practitioner mm -hmm. and get regular sessions for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the self-correction, I don't think that it can be uh, corrected by your own self. You need a therapist or okay. a counselor. Because, you know, uh, it also affects your mind also. That's some business booming. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. But yes, there are a lot of people who believe in it, who are like, hey, you know what, we right. really need help. And, you know, we certainly will reach out for help as well. Mm -hmm. But then there are people like me or Haja who are like, hey, you know what, we are strong enough and we need to sort right. it out ourselves as well. Right. Two days we do that. Third day we're back on it. You know, <laughs> right. that's the only problem. So most of the times we are trying, but there's a higher chance of relapse. Now for people right. who have, have been uh, consulting a lot of psychologists or psychiatrists mm -hmm. for such kind of anomaly, how do you think, God forbid, if re a relapse takes place, how do you think they're supposed to behave? No, for that purpose, that's why I said it needs long-term therapy sessions okay. because uh, in in the foreign country they give like at least fifty sessions for that. So it it is a very uh, long-term sort of a thing, you know. Right. Because sometimes there are unresolved issues uh, of the mind, so a person cannot uh, correct it all by himself. All right. So they need some therapist uh, to help them do so. Okay, and how do you figure out that you need a therapy in the first place? Because you know when you are staying up late at night, you definitely feel hungry, right? And then there are deals, you know, that comes into your social media pages. We can get them ordered because you don't have to cook ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah, and this it's just going to be at your doorstep. Right, right. Convenient. Right, and this can be also not an anomaly, right? Uh, so where is that fine line, you know, where do we feel that this behavior is getting very, you know, destructive and we need to get some help? Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Firstly, unfollow all the, those pages. <laughs> this is the first thing to do. Right. 
because yeah. you keep on right, getting the notification. Right now, because I'm not following any such page of food. I'm not you know, so, so I do not really need to do that. What about you? I don't follow, follow them, but you just Google you delete it. that application on your phone. Right? I, I don't have that application because I have memory issues, but I can just go to the Google and, you know, I can go to the website. You can't wow. do anything about it. Wow, right? that's, just, that's just fabulous. So probably, you know, we really need to help ourselves by deleting all of that and make right. sure that you're not watching a lot of food content. You know, because, right. um, you know, a lot of people put up some amazing desserts. And I think that's what right. my weakness is. Right. Whenever I go to a place where they have a lot of desserts to offer, I just go crazy. But now, uh, a slight change in the topic, and that is that, you know, uh, and we certainly right. want to discuss it because one of our team members advised us to do so as well. So imagine mm -hmm. that, you know, when as kids we are growing up, mm -hmm. you know, so there's constantly this pressure of, um, you know, if you're not going to study well, you might not uh, have a good job right. or you might not be respected and whatnot, you know, so those societal pressures are there. Right. Now, what happens is that, you know, while we're growing up, uh, and that life goes on for at least the first 22 or 23 years. Mm -hmm. And the pressure is so immense, even on the parents too as well, they take it to their heart that God forbid, right. even if the kid does not make to a good university, even they stop talking to other relatives as well, what their kids are doing. Now imagine that pressure, first of all, then there's another pressure of getting a job and that to a good one where there's six or seven figure salary. Mm -hmm. Then there's another pressure where the, all the jobs which are being offered ask for an experience. Now for a fresh graduate, there's no experience. Over here in Pakistan, we certainly do not have that kind of uh, culture where the academia and the corporate organizations have a bridging uh, in between them, you know, so there's a longer gap. Right. So that's another pressure. Then as soon as you get married, uh, get your job, they want you to get married, you get married, <coughs> they want you to have a son or a girl or a baby or whatsoever. So, you know, we continue to live under pressure. How do you think it will have an impact on our brains? And for kids who certainly, unfortunately, cannot make it to the expectations of their parents, what do they go through and how can they recover from it? Yeah, uh, you are right. Uh, basically, there is a lot of social pressure and, uh, you know, we, we are always trying to fit in to the specific image or, yes. you know, we want to be like somebody else. True. So I think this is the mistake that some parents do by pressurizing their children too much. It should not be done because uh, it completely, you know, destructs their uh, mental growth and mental capacity. It, it definitely affects them. True. Their studies and, you know, everything and their self-image also. Yeah. And when especially parents start comparing their child to some other uh, children, it, it affects them very much, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they try to think that they are my parents, but they are... Yeah. <laughs> Constantly like giving <laughs> examples of others. Best say, okay, the cow, uske number dekho. That's true, Ami Abu, you have done that too as well. And, and right. I still remember, I think it was Mubarak uncle's son, you know, who was a topper, okay. you know, in, in my family and every right. time my result would come out. So I wasn't really a very uh, right. fond student of uh, man, you know i wasn't really very fond of studying as well even right. though that i've never missed a year alhamdulillah i was a good student in my university but in school and college i was horrible at times you know so mm -hmm. if there were a total of 33 students i would be at 31 29 and you know once i think i was at seven or six because majority of the students weren't attempting those exams as well mm -hmm. so imagine every single time my father would be like mubarak sahab ke bete ko dekho and Ami would be like, Uske beta ko dekho. And, and you know, I was like, hey, you know what, why don't you look at your son? You know, this is what he's, what right. he's done, you know, so I appreciate while we are here as well. <laughs> How do you think that we can get rid of uh, this trait of our parents? And you know, right. because Alhamdulillah, uh, I think we're lucky enough as parents. Now the schools do not do that. You know, they have right. an aggregate, they will give you a percentage, no first, second, third, you know, do whatever you oh, do. Really? And there's lesser pressure. But, you know, we have certainly gone through that and it hurts you. Imagine that, you know, when my board result was out, it's a right. story which I would love to share. Okay, okay. My first ever board result came out and who was it? The person who called me to tell me my board exam result was my Pupo's son, you know, who has, who's already topped it. What was his name? <laughs> yeah, his name was Sharyar, I think. Sharyar, if you're listening, bro, you know, we're just reminiscing over uh, okay. the past stories as well. But... Other people are more worried about your result than right. you are. So mm -hmm. I was somewhere Lahore shopping, doing whatever I'm doing. And he calls me, he's like, you pass. Ho gaya. I was like, how would you know? He was like, my result came out too as well. I was like, why would you check my? He's like, just like that, because you're a cousin. So how do we get out of this circle? It's a vicious circle though. Basically, we are the people uh, with low self-esteem. So that's why we, you know, try to compete with others. And we think that uh, if we have uh, got more marks than our cousin, then we are better than them. <laughs> 
basically uh, if you talked about your own experience so if you were not that good much uh, good in studies you would be uh, better in some other aspects maybe yeah. sports Thank maybe you very much. maybe I was debate. I was always good in sports because dancing because yeah, yeah 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 because psychologically it happens you yeah. are it, it is not the case that if you are not getting good marks then yeah. you are uh, not you know you don't have any skill at all yeah. right. you might be uh, focusing on some other aspect True. Right. some other yeah. area but imagine what i was focusing on because you know okay so story time once again <laughs> okay so you know the only cup or an award i got in <laughs> my school and college <laughs> life entire school and college life was when i performed at the annual day function okay. and i danced over a song and you know i was okay. awarded the most extra co curricular student or something of that so that was the only cup mm -hmm. which i received as well but then at the same time obviously you know while we we are talking about how you know people will be good on other facets as well that's mm -hmm. not how our education systems work you know so right. imagine they would always talk about hanji kitne number hai aage admission hoga nahi hoga and then parents are certainly worried most of the time parents can afford your private education most of the time they do not so how do we see it from the parents perspective because they really do get worried about the future of their children mm -hmm. so they do get tense and then when they get tense it is a lot of problem they too. try to release yes, it on the kids it is a lot of problem so how do we deal with that uh, basically uh, this educational system needs to be reformed because uh, this is not the right thing because it is affecting the mental health of so many students yeah. so firstly it needs to be corrected because it will also uh, affect the parents also and they will also change their uh, way of thinking or treating their uh, children so yeah. it needs to be done on on a bigger level bigger scale right. and as for the parents they need to be educated they need to see such you know uh, television can also be a, an informative source and they should uh, listen to psychologists or some other uh, people sociologists and they must educate them that uh, it will affect the mental health of their children if they would pressurize their children yeah. about the grades exactly so thank you very much thinking. thank you very much for saying that right. and you know you should have been around when i was going to college so another story <laughs> story to <laughs> once again so yeah. this is to tell you how much of a good student i was so imagine so right. in my first year examination um you know when the result came out i got to know that i actually failed mathematics and okay. i only got 9 marks out of 100 okay. and i was devastated i was like hey you know what's wrong because me and my sister we used to go to the same class okay and so so she had uh, i think it was the marks was then out of 550 she okay. had 420 or 425 okay. i was at some one 297 <laughs> and i i was devastated i was like hey you know what there's something wrong but alhamdulillah my father was in, has always been very gentle he was like okay you know what you can do is that you can probably prepare well mm -hmm. the next year and then you can reappear i was like yeah yeah i'll do it the first day of the college i i jump out of the college is wow and you know my teacher sees me i go back home there's a lot of beating <laughs> which i have to go through and then i appeared again in the mathematics exam thinking that i will pass it because in the board examination all you need to do is score a total of 66 imagine how many i got 68 <laughs> so i was close i think 40% is passed no 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 it, it, it was 33 uh, it is 33 marks out of 100 and imagine right. i got 68 and even then 40 was in the second year's mathematics exam <laughs> <laughs> it was 28 in the first year's exam as well so i can never get over this fact as well but i've never bothered about it and the right. you know, sole reason why i'm sharing this story with you guys is that you know it's not that um, you know you failing or passing right. will uh, define your destiny it is about how much work you're going to put on or into yourself and then how much you are focused right. on your goals and that you practice about them so i was singing dancing hosting shows ever since i was in my college school university right that here i am alhamdulillah and you know shazad you know how many jobs that we go to ask us you know what are your um metric <laughs> how many marks did you get you know no one asks that it's just exactly. your cv and you need to be street smart in yeah. order to have a good job and in right? addition to that i think i was in the wrong schooling system and it was because right. of the fact that you know when we talk about schooling systems imagine i got, went to university my first semester i had a scholarship 3.67 gpa and then in the fourth semester i had another scholarship as well so it is about what you understand better what you right. can absorb and then how you can comprehend and kind of give it back onto the paper as well so very quickly i would want you to talk to everybody god forbid if they're going through these conditions how do how can they come themselves out of it if somebody is going through some sort of social pressure or something uh they should not uh, you know uh, associate their self esteem with these things you know okay. one has to be uh, themselves 
they need not be compa uh, compared with some other person. Nahi hoti se. <laughs> Something like this. This is this is me. Yeah, please go on. The best thing is that you know one needs to be compassionate towards himself also. Like we are we are told to be kind towards others. So why not become compassionate towards our own self? True. So we are too hard to our uh, own self. Thank you very much. Thank you very You're much, Mati Sahiba, for being with us. Lovely You're to welcome. be in conversation. Right. Thank you very much for listening to our stories. <laughs> because <laughs> the sole reason why we were sharing these stories is that a lot of people can connect with them and uh, ladies right. and gentlemen you know lives are never perfect it's just you who really need to behave the way that you know whatever wherever or whatever the life is going to do to you that you'll always be happy that you'll always have that content and this is what will take you forward this will this is something which will take you ahead and right. you want to say right and i think to conclude this session is the self betterment and self care always come first True. right and with this we are saying goodbye and until next time we will come back with another good episode with another good story with another good topic so <laughs> Till the next time, please make sure that you write to us on our Facebook page, which right. is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter and Daily Motion. World This Morning. And YouTube. World This Morning. And the fabulous repeat is going to be at 5 past 10. Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Have a great weekend. Jumma Mubarak.